Hey everyone, and welcome to the sixth episode of my Pokemath series, where I'll be making short videos on some of the maths behind Pokemon game mechanics. In this episode, we'll be dealing with stat experience and DVs in generations 1 and 2. I never knew what to expect when I leveled up. How much would each stat increase by? Why did some stats not increase one level, but then they did the next one? And also, when I evolve from Pidgey to Pidgeotto, what will my new stats be? Stats are calculated using these two equations. As with all other Pokemon equations, these look nasty, but all we really care about is the fact that stats are dependent on base stats, DVs, stat experience, and level. Base stats are identical for Pokemon of the same species. Every Charmander has the same base stats, and those base stats are different from a Charmeleon or a Bulbasaur. They represent the characteristics of the Pokemon. The defensive tank Onyx has a massive base defense stat. The speedy Electrode has a massive base speed stat, for example. DVs, or determinant values, are hidden values associated with each stat. Each is a random number between 0 and 15. If base stats are the defining features, distinguishing one species from another, DVs are the random mutations that result in some individuals being faster, stronger, or better in every way than the average members of their species. DVs got swapped out for IVs from Generation 3 onwards, as well as stat experience being replaced by EVs, but they'll both get their own video at some point. As a child, I never understood the answer to the question in Blaine's gym. Tombstoner, brother! N no, not that one, Matt. The one about Pokemon of the same species of the same level having different stats, and DVs are the reason for this. A casual player of Gen 1 and 2 would be forgiven for not knowing DVs even exist, as they aren't exposed in normal gameplay, but using ROM memory readers like Gamehook or PK Hex, we can see the values. For example, the two level 4 Pidgeys I've caught have different DV values for their various stats and therefore their current stats are different. Pokemon in Gen 1 and 2 have four DV values associated with them, Attack, Defense, Speed, and Special. Even though Gen 2 split the Special stat into Special Attack and Special Defense, they're still driven by the same DV. The HP DV is calculated using the other four, by taking the least significant bit of the binary string and assembling them into new binary strings in the order Attack, Defense, Speed, and then Special, which is a sentence I never thought I'd have to say. Basically, turn each DV value into a binary string, grab the rightmost digit for each, and assemble them into a new binary. So for this example, where we have a 15 in attack, 10 for defense, 6 in speed, and 7 in special, our HP binary string is 1001, which is 9, and PK Hex can confirm that for us. For those unsure about binary, it's a way of representing any number using only 1s and zeros, with the far right digit representing 1, the next digit representing 2, then 4, then 8, and so on, doubling in value with each new digit. To calculate a binary string, you add up all the values of those digits. So for the binary string 1111, it's the same as saying 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 15. Or in the case of our calculated HP DV 1001, it's the same as saying 8 plus 1, which is 9. As each of the four DVs is a random number between 0 and 15, the odds of finding a perfect Pokemon in the wild, that is a Pokemon with a DV of 15 in each stat, is 1 over 16 to the power of 4, or 0.002%, or 1 in 65,536. Many solo challenge runners will either reset at the point where they're first given their starter, until they find one with a good DV spread, or they use Gamehook or PK Hex to force the Pokemon to have the DVs they want it to have. Another thing DVs are responsible for is a Pokemon's shininess. If a Pokemon in Generation 2 has 10 for its Defense, Speed, and Special DVs, and then an Attack DV of 2, 3, 6, 7, 10, 11, 14, or 15, it will be a Shiny. This is how Shiny odds are calculated, as the odds of a wild Pokemon being Shiny is 8 over 16 times 1 over 16 times 1 over 16 times 1 over 16, which is 1 in 8192. They also determine a bunch of other stuff, but I'll cover them another time. The last unknown from the stat equation is stat experience. Again, it's a variable that's hidden from the player, so we'll be using PK Hex to have a look. Stat experience is the Pokemon equivalent of you are what you eat. Every opponent your Pokemon defeats, the enemy base stats will get added to your stat experience. So for example, we've caught a fresh Pidgey, and like all wild Pokemon it has zero experience in each stat. We will then defeat a Sentret, and our Pidgey's stat experience has changed. Pidgey's stat experience is increased by the base stats of the defeated Sentret. Although you notice that the stat experience for Special Defense is the same as the one for Special Attack. This is a carryover from Gen 1 where Special was just one stat. 
And so this is why stat experience is you are what you eat. The more speedy Pokemon you battle, the more your speed stat experience will increase, and therefore the more your speed stat will increase. If multiple of your Pokemon are involved in the defeat of an enemy Pokemon, the enemy base stats will be evenly split between all of your Pokemon that were involved in the fight. Stat experience for each stat can get up to a maximum value of 65,535. Anytime you see a weird max value like that, it's safe to assume binaries are to blame. So just as an experiment to see the impact of stat experience, I've cloned three identical Bulbasaurs, level 50 with identical DVs and no stat experience. And so we can see the stats for each Pokemon are the same as the others. One will battle Pidgeys on Route 2, one will battle Onyx in Victory Road, and one will sit on its arse and eat a rare candy. Now let's fast forward until they're all level 51. Because the experience yield of low level Pidgeys in the early game is so low, Pidgeysaur ended up defeating 259 birds before leveling up. And so as we can see here, its stat experience in each stat increased by 259 times the base stat of a Pidgey which has resulted in the following stats. The higher leveled Onyx in Victory Road provided lots of experience, so Onyx Saw leveled up after defeating only 12 snakes. And so as we can see, its stat experience has increased by 12 times Onyx's base stats, resulting in the following stat totals. And finally, Chonkasaur instantly grew to level 51 with a rare candy, obtaining zero stat experience as he didn't battle anyone. And so as you can see, if racking up stats is your goal, slow and steady wins the race as the base stats that get applied are the same regardless of the enemy's level, and so you can cram more stat experience in between level ups if you battle lower level Pokemon. It's worth noting here that the amount of stat experience you get per battle can be doubled if your Pokemon is inflicted with Poker Rust, but that'll be getting its own video soon. Killing 200 Pigeons isn't the only way you can boost your stat experience. Vitamins are a cheeky shortcut. Vitamins can be found on the floor or for sale in some shops. These vitamins increase the stat experience of their associated stat by 2,560, or roughly about 70 Route 2 Pidgeys worth. But if a stat experience has reached 25,600 or higher, additional vitamins will no longer have an effect. So cram your vitamins in early to get the most use out of them. So now we have all the info we need to know when our stats will be calculated at any time. So let's use this example of a level 20 Cyndaquil with the following DVs and stat experience. Using the HP formula, we can see that base plus DV times 2 will be 108, and then we add a quarter of the square root of the stat experience. Normally, with all things Pokemon, we'd expect to round down, but due to how the assembly code calculates square roots, we actually round the value up. Then we round down when we divide by 4. So that's the square root of 20,000, which is 141.4, rounded up to 142, then divided by 4, which is 35.5, rounded down to 35. So 143 times our level, which is 20, is 2,860, divided by 100 is 28 rounded down. And finally, add our level plus 10, which gives us an HP stat of 58. And we can calculate the other stats using the other stats equation. And our results are matching what's in the game. So when a Pidgey evolves into a Pidgeotto, the boost to the stats comes from the level increase and the fact that Pidgeotto's base stats are higher than Pidgey's unlike what I thought as a child, which was that the act of evolving gave a boost to stats. Stats are recalculated when leveling up, when eating vitamins, or when going in and out of the PC. So just because your Charizard is level 100 doesn't mean his stats aren't going to grow anymore. Increase those stat XP values by battling a handful of Sentret, and a quick in out at the PC, and there we go. All Pokemon you fight, Wild or Trainer, have zero in each of their stat experience values. In Generation 1, Trainer Pokemon all have the same DVs, an attack value of 9, and the other stats are an 8. In Generation 2, trainer Pokemon DVs are specific to the particular trainer type, and so if Youngster Joey managed to catch a level 50 Dragonite, it would have worse stats than Lancers. Finally, here's a breakdown of Mewtwo at level 100, with either perfect DVs, or full DVs, full stat experience, or no stat experience, and so you can see how much these variables change the end stat values. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, because I definitely did. If there's any game mechanic you'd like me to do an episode on, then please let me know. Next time, I'll be looking at battle experience and level up groups. See ya!